Okay, so you use laboratory putty. I'm using the GC uh, laboratory putty, the GCLT. I like the shore hardness, it works great. Not so much about the material this video, but as about how to manipulate and how to use the material. A couple of things. Once those, these are sitting in cans, you have to proportionate. What I usually do is if I'm going to proportionate, I leave a piece of cellophane down, put the pieces down, take them out so that I have both sitting side by side. As you know, this is a, a addition a silicone, so we're adding one to another rather than the paste, which is the condensation style. Um, so with that in mind, I will take a small amount of the putty, and what I like to do with it in order to help it be more kneadable is that I take and I put it in both of my hands and kind of warm them up independent of each other first. Um, the material, if it's sitting in a container, of course, it uh, becomes a little stiff, a little rigid. It doesn't mix nearly as good. So what I like to do with the material anyways before I start to use it is I just like to warm it up. So by just manipulating it in this regard, I can do so. And when you, you'll know when it starts to soften because it the warmth of your fingers will begin to make it more uh, pliable and malleable. Once that occurs, what I like to do is I like to take and roll the material into two independent little sausages like that. And then a little trick that I learned from a guy uh, in Europe was to take the putty, lay it side by side, and pull it. When you do that, what you do is you're basically infiltrating it quicker. You're mixing it quicker by pulling it. See how the uh, material gets mixed more thoroughly and more uniformly. Once you get it to the point where it starts to look like what it's supposed to look like, which in this case is blue and uh, yellow equals a green, then, it, then you can do your conventional, you know, over and over and over kind of basically to mix it. Make sure you stay within the mixing time so it doesn't start setting up on you. A common problem, and I use the putty quite a bit, used to be for me, is once I got the putty, how do I get the, how do I keep from having any kind of like uh, lines in the putty so that when I adapt it later it comes out like you can see a demarcation line. So, you know, I thought about it, and I use it quite a bit. I use the putty quite a bit. I use it for uh, things like this. Uh, one scoop of each is enough to make an isolation barrier. I like it because it's a little more rigid than some of the other material. And I only have to use a scoop of one and a scoop of the other. It goes a long way. But with that being said, I don't like to get seams on it. So what I found is if I took a piece of plexiglass and if I roll it like this, if I roll the material out, I can get rid of the seams. It's nice and smooth now. Now, when I go to adapt it, I won't have any of those unsightly seams in the material after I've adapted it. That was just my timer letting me know that my acrylic is almost set up over on the other side of the room. Anyway, just wanted to show you, see how nice that is now. When, if I was going to apply it to this mold, of course, I would press it against the teeth like this and then roll it up to, but not over, the incisal edge course of the teeth in the mold. Uh, but again, seam free, and that's really what I'm trying to obtain, is I don't have to worry about any lines or any seams in the material that way. Anyway, I just thought it was worth mentioning. It's a little technique thing, a couple of things. The plexiglass, warming the material up and rolling it out like that makes it much smoother, and when you adapt it, it gives you a seam free type of surface. Very nice, intimate surface. A little bit about wrapping the putty now, at least uh, on the isolation for the teeth of the denture. So I've taken my one scoop of one and one scoop of the other for my um, GCLT uh, lab putty and I'm softening it up as I showed earlier and I'll show you how I wrap this. So. Once you get it to where it's warmed up, what I do is, like I showed you earlier, I just take and then just roll it out and then lay it side by side. You could do this with any amount of material. I'm just, I only use a scoop of each for 
just isolating the surfaces because I don't want to pick stone out from between the teeth um, when I'm finishing it. So this works really well. Actually, good separator does too, works well too, but I'm doing this for the demonstration. So here you go. Put them together and then I just pull them. See how that infiltrates like I showed you earlier. I'm going to move fast on this because it'll set up otherwise. Once you get it mixed in, then just do your thing. Next I, thing I do is take and roll this so there's no seams on it. Remember, showed you that. Roll it out enough so you can place it where you need to. And what I'm going to do is do this. I always start down at the base like that and then I work my way up. See? Now, if you had material left over, which I don't, I would take and put little balls all the way around. But since I don't, I'm just going to take a screwdriver that I just happen to have real close to me and I'm going to put indentations like this. What that does is that locks the putty in the stone that you're going to cap this with. And again, I just kind of bump it. I just want it to catch when the stone is pulled into it. Now, what I'll do also is just make sure that it's pressed in and approximately up here near the top. You don't want to have any gaps between the tooth and the putty. And you notice I'm leaving this all exposed so that um, when I pour the stone it'll fill in any of those voids. Okay, that's good. See, I stayed off the land area here. And I just have the putty adapted. Take just minutes and this will, uh, this will be set up. And then what I'll do is I'll take and pour my cap, put the secondary part on and then pour my cap. As I showed in other videos, if you look through my YouTubes, I use the Rapid Flask from Whipmix. Anyways, that's just to show you how that comes together and show you my technique for covering the facials of the teeth for easier breakout and finish.